In this video, you'll learn how to create this in-camera shot for less than $50 of craft supplies needed for the construction of a 16th scale miniature. A miniature is rarely an arbitrary size. Plans need to be drawn based on a working scale that will support the story point. Typically, larger miniatures are more realistic because of greater detail and functionality. In the case of our hole in the roof, I wanted to build a miniature where the internal smoke and fire look believable. You have to start somewhere, so I'm reverse engineering the miniature size based on the fastest camera speed my equipment is capable of. My Lumix GH4 shoots a true 96 frames a second, which is the recommended speed for smoke and fire at a 16th scale, or 3 quarters of an inch equals one real foot. I'm thinking the hole in the roof should look like it's 9 feet in diameter, so at 3 quarters of an inch per foot, our miniature hole will be 6 and 3 quarter inches across. How did we come up with 6 and 3 quarters inches? 9 times 3 quarters, or 0.75, equals 6 and 3 quarters inches. Three quarters of an inch to a foot is 16th scale. How is that calculated? Divide one foot, or 12 inches, by 0.75, and the answer is 16. How do you calculate the frame rate for a 16th scale miniature? Take the square root of 16, that equals 4, and multiply 4 times 24, that equals 96. These sticks are meant to be the remains of the roof rafters on the near side of impact. This piece of foam core will be the backing for the attic ceiling inside the roof. These popsicle sticks will represent undamaged roof rafters. The foil is meant to be insulation backing. The cotton balls will be the attic insulation. The brown pipe cleaner is just a detail element. This is what will be seen behind the hole in the roof. These blue screen patches will allow the real roof to print through to help to blend with the miniature roof. Roofing shingles will be cut out of this felt sheet. Let's step away from the model building for a moment to discuss two important principles that will determine the success of our shot. With a cardboard cutout, I conducted a quick survey of the location with a 40 millimeter lens. I'm currently estimating that the miniature will be approximately 10 feet from the camera and 60 feet from the roof, necessitating an f-stop that will keep the entire 60 foot zone in focus. This is our photographic cornerstone and is often called the required depth of field. I'm shooting the measuring tape with a 40 millimeter lens. The blue markers are 5 feet apart with the first marker placed 5 feet from the lens. We'll shoot this test with the focus set at 15 feet. Our starting f-stop will be 2.8. At 2.8, the indispensable PCAM app will define the exact depth of field including the near and far focus parameters. For the Lumix GH4, wearing a 40 millimeter lens, focused at 15 feet, an f-stop of 2.8 will give us a depth of field of 4 feet, 1 and a half inches. The near focus of 13 foot 3 inches is not enough to carry focus on a miniature placed at 10 feet. And a far of 17 feet 4 inches is not even close to keeping the roof in focus. At f16, we get considerably more depth of field, 
54 feet, 9 and a half inches. The near of 8 foot 6 inches will carry the miniature at 10 feet, but the roof will still be soft at 63 feet, 4 inches. We need more. Check out F-22. This tiny iris opening finally satisfies our focus requirements. A huge depth of field with a near focus of 7 foot 3 inches and a far out to infinity and possibly beyond. F-22 will be our working aperture. Look carefully at the gray cutout. It's sliding across the roof background. Holes in roofs don't usually do that. We can solve this problem in the following demonstration. Notice the alignment of the two blocks. The goal is to maintain that alignment while panning. Start by marking the lens in the forward position on the sliding base plate. As we start the pan, we quickly see that the foreground block is sliding against the background block. Let's move the lens back to see if that improves this issue. That's better. Let's move it some more. There, the foreground and background are locked together. By moving the lens back three inches, we have found what is known as the nodal point of the lens. The nodal point is where the light paths cross before being focused on the film plane. If the nodal point is placed precisely above the hinge point of the pan axis, then there will be no perspective shift in a pan. In other words, no sliding. All the shingles are now attached. They'll be distressed in stages to assist the blend. This is the structure that the attic will be glued to. The model is now complete. Let's see how it looks in front of the roof. The snow is a problem because the miniature is built for dry conditions. But what I can tell from this is that the shingles look too clean. So I'm going to add gray paint, smudges, and debris to the face of the miniature and hope for a warm spell. As you can see, it warmed up. Here's how the miniature looks in front of a dry roof after some cosmetic adjustments. And then, I did a fire test. The model survived, and in many ways, I think it looks better now. The burned shingle edges and singed interior is probably what you would expect from a molten rock slamming into your house. I'm going to add to this new look and then photograph the miniature one final time. We got some more snow, but this time I'm melting it to simulate an outer impact zone. The final lens size is 25 millimeters, and at that focal length, an F16 covers the required depth of field. ISO of 800 at 96 frames per second. Just so you know, I've never built a miniature before. It's fun. You should give it a try. Here's the finished shot. <laughs>